All right. Yeah, Levin, so as I said, I'm going to make some videos uh, in regards to exercise 3i. And I'm going to guide you through the questions. I'll do as many as I can. Um, and I'll, I'll keep doing more even tomorrow because tomorrow is Labor Day. So I'll have more time to do all the questions. Uh, but for today, I'm going to get you started on question five. Exercise 3i, question one or four is pretty straightforward on how to use a discriminant. Uh, whereas question five onwards actually practices you applying your understanding of the discriminants. Yeah, what I taught in class. So I'm going to do more examples so you sort of uh, get the idea. But just to quickly recap, uh, remember the discriminant. Okay, the discriminant is coming from your quadratic formula, which is from exercise 3h. The quadratic formula, which is negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is the formula, which is it's called the quadratic formula. It's the formula to allow you to find the x-intercepts of any quadratic equation. Okay, uh, For those who haven't yet done exercise 3h, your general quadratic equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Yeah? A is the number multiplied to x squared, B is the number times to x, The coefficient of, uh, it's the coefficient of x, and C is the number without the x, yeah? You apply those into the formula and it will tell you the x-intercept. Now, in exercise 3i, they've analyzed this part, and that's what I tried to describe in class. I said that it seems like whether you get an x-intercept or not, or how many x-intercepts you get, is highly dependent on what b squared minus 4ac is because it's what you're square rooting. So this is the key part here. They notice that if b squared minus 4ac is a positive number, so we use the symbol to call it the discriminant. If it's a positive number, okay, if it's a positive number, let's say b squared minus 4ac ends up equaling to 4, then what we realize is that it be, the equation becomes negative x is negative b plus minus the root of 4, divided by you know 2a root of 4 will end up being negative b plus or minus the answer so plus or minus 2 so that's why you get two answers you get negative b plus the 2 over 2a or you get negative b minus the 2 over 2a so it's interesting because if it's positive if b squared minus 4ac is a positive number you're always going to get two answers what do the two answers represent they represent the number of x-intercepts you get Okay, so that just means that you get two x-intercepts. So that's why they made up this, or uh, well, they didn't make up, they're just saying, oh, well, if it's a positive number, square root of any positive number will give you two answers, and plus and a minus answer. So they said, all right, if you get a positive b squared minus 4ac, it will give you two x-intercepts. They'll say, and then they say, okay, well, what happens if b squared minus 4ac, which is this again, what if that was equal to zero? And what we find is if it's zero, then actually what happens is it becomes square root of zero. But we know that the square root of zero ends up being negative b plus minus zero. But that doesn't change anything. You see, if I just add on or subtract zero, the answer is still negative b over 2a. That's, that's the key step. So really, you only got one answer, whereas the previous one I just showed you, when b squared minus 4ac is positive, you get two answers. So they say when the discriminant is equal to zero, you get one x-intercept, or they call it one solution, or unique solution. When discriminant is greater than zero, which means when it's positive, you get two x-intercepts, or they say two solutions. And then when discriminant is less than zero, they say there's no solutions, and the logic makes sense because if it was a negative number, let's say b squared minus 4ac was negative two, then you'll find that you can't square root the negative 2. So what happens is you can't go to the next step. you got negative b plus minus something that you don't know. So you have no idea what the answer is. And because of that, there are, there are no answers. And if there are no answers to the x-intercept, then that means there's no x-intercept. Okay? That's the quick gist of, of what the idea is about. Now let's do the questions, yeah? So let's say you now know how to find the discriminant. Now the question tells you, okay, they tell you here, they say, okay, they want you to find the values of m for which each of the following equations, which let's say a, let's say I gave you y equals to x squared minus 4m times x plus 20. 
They say, what should M be so that I can make sure I get no solutions? No solutions means I want this equation, whatever M is going to be, I want this equation to have no x-intercepts at all. Okay, that's, that's what I basically want. That's what they're saying. Okay, so we don't know what M is right now. We can trial and error. You can sit here and keep plugging in numbers and see until you get no solutions. But see, that's not the technique we're trying to teach you. We're trying to teach you to analyze all possible things without trial and error so you can actually solve it. So right now, if we're going to look at this equation and we're going to say, all right, well, what is my A? What is my B? What is my C? So this is, let's have a look. A is the number in front of x squared, which is currently 1, even though we don't write it. We've got negative 4m, which is the number of times to x, that's your b, and then you've got plus 20, that's your c. So if I write it out, this is what I have. I've got a, which is 1, b, which is negative 4m, c, which is 20. So according to the quadratic formula here, okay, so I'm just going to take that off. According to this quadratic formula, if I want to know how many x-intercepts I'm going to get, I can find it by using this formula. This will give me the x-intercepts. So if I want to find the x-intercepts, I would say, all right, x will equal to negative of uh, b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This will tell me the x-intercepts, right? But here's the thing. I right now, I don't really care what the x-intercepts are. I just want to know what should m be so that I get no x-intercepts. No x-intercepts means that I just don't want the graph to touch the x-axis. And what we, get, we know from our understanding is that the only way that you're not going to get any x-intercepts is if you can't solve for x. The only way you can't solve for x is if you can't square root the answer. So you can't square root b squared minus 4c, which is the discriminant. The only way you can't square root is if the discriminant is a negative number. True? Because if it's a, the discriminant is a negative number, b squared minus 4ac, if it's a negative number, I can't square root it, I can't find an answer. Right? So here I say, all right, well, b squared minus 4ac, what will this equal to? So let's have a look. I've got b squared, b, which is negative 4m, so negative 4m squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 20. All right? This gives me 16m squared minus 80. This is the discriminant, right? <laughs> What you want though, see what you want is you said the only way for it to not uh, work, the only way that your equation is not going to work is if this answer, whatever m is, whatever you choose, if this answer ends up being a negative. Now you can sit here and keep trial and error, you can sub in like m equals 1 and see if it's less than 0, you can try m equals 2, m equals 3, m equals 4, but you see we're not here to trial and error, we're here to solve. We're here to find out when is the discriminant less than zero? That's what we want, true? Meaning when it's negative. So 16m squared minus 80, we want the answer to be a negative answer. Now, here we go. What we're going to do is, and this is the technique I want you to do for every single equation. The reason why you needed to practice exercise 3a to 3f, without those, you'll find this hard. You see, what you're meant to be sketching now is you're pretending this is your y-axis and this is your x-axis, right? I'm asking you to sketch the graph where the y-axis is your discriminants. So remember, all these values here is your positive discriminant. All these y values here are your negative discriminants. And anything on the x-axis is when discriminant is zero, true? Whereas on your x-axis is now the variable m. Means whatever you choose for m, whether m's one, m's two, m's three, instead of trial and error, we can sketch this. Negative one, negative two, negative three, we can sketch it. So we're trying to sketch this graph where it's 16m squared minus 80. Now I can sketch this graph by looking and reading the turning point form. So I'm going to read this. I'm going to say, well, this is a turning point form. It's down by 80. Okay. And it doesn't move left or right because what you're squaring is just m. So it doesn't move left or right, and it's a very narrow graph, 16 is bigger than 1, and it's a smiley face. So it's down by 80, so it goes down, it's very narrow as well, so down by 80. So let's just say that's down by 80, in okay, case so it's gone down by 80, and you're, it doesn't move left or right, so your turning point is at 0, negative 80, okay, and it's a smiley face, and I've drawn it. So this is what it looks like. What I don't know is 
where the x-intercepts are or the m-intercepts. I don't know what that is. Now the only way to find the m-intercepts is when discriminant, see notice that coordinate here, that's on the x-axis. So it's m by discriminant. And we know that anything on the m-axis or the x-axis, the y-value has to be zero. So we're saying this discriminant has to be zero. So let's solve for it. If this is zero, you have 16m squared minus 80. Yeah, you add 80 on both sides, you get 80 equals 16m squared. You divide 16 on both sides, so 80 divided by 16 equals to m squared. Okay, and um, what does that reduce down to? That's what, uh, divide by 4, so it's 4 on 20. Oh, it's 5 actually. So, 5. Is that right? 4, is it even 20? Divided by 4. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's 5. m squared equals 5, and therefore m must be square root of 5, but plus minus. Right? So what does that tell me? It just tells me I just found out these coordinates. This is what I just found out. I was just solving for these points here, because the discriminant equals 0. That's the confusing part. A lot of students get so used to y and x. It doesn't have to be y and x. This is your y. This is your x. So because I want to find these coordinates, I know that's when y equals 0. And that's what I did. I just let y equal to 0. And, and then I solve for x. And in my case here, m is equal to root plus minus 5. So this just tells me this is root 5 and this is negative root 5. Now remember, in x, I'm, going to, I'm just going to draw this again just so that you don't get confused. Okay, I've got a very thin graph. Uh, very thin graph. And we just figured out this was down by 80, so 0, negative 80. We found out the m-intercepts was root 5 when discriminant 0. And this is negative root 5 when discriminant 0. This is your m-axis, this is your discriminant. True? And in our case, we were asking, and this is exercise 3G, where I told you to practice in equations. You see, this is where it comes in handy. What did you want again? What was your goal? Your goal was that you wanted no solutions. The only way to get no solutions was if the discriminant was a negative number. So what you can see here, I'm just going to rub this off so you don't get confused, okay? If we look at the graph, the discriminant is the y-axis. See, it's the y-axis. But what we want is the discriminant to be negative because if the discriminant, in this region here, on the graph, the only time that you're going to have a negative discriminant is here. That's the only time. True, I'm just going to rub this off. That's the only time in your axes that it is going to be, whoops, that it is going to be negative. These coordinates here, all of these coordinates here have a negative grad uh, discriminant, discriminant, negative discriminant, negative discriminant. And we know that if the discriminant is negative, you can't square root it. So what m values can you choose to make sure it's negative is if you made sure you chose any numbers between, I'm going to do it in highlight over here, any numbers here in between that will give you a y value on the graph that is negative discriminant. So your answer to this question is clearly, when will it be? It's when m, if you want to choose, just choose any between the numbers, anything between negative root 5 to root 5, and we know the discriminant should be negative or less than 0. Okay, based on the graph. So if I chose this point here, you can see it's on the graph right here. And that point there has definitely a negative discriminant. So let's test this. Okay, so what I just said is I just said the answer to answer A. The answer for A is M has to be between negative root 5 to root 5. And it should be good if I chose any numbers between that. I should get the entire equation to be have no x-axis intercepts. Now I'm going to show you what I mean. The, the reason why it's confusing is because you actually got two graphs. You've got a y and x, and then you've got a discriminant m. Okay, I'm going to put up GeoGebra now. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay, try to try to think about what you're actually doing here. Remember, don't lose track of all the algebra. Remember the goal. The goal was to get no x-axis intercepts. The problem is you don't know what m should be. Instead of trial and error, I just figured out when m, so I'm looking at this graph here, I'm like, well, m has to be between negative root 5 to root 5 for me to get a negative discriminant. And negative discriminant would mean that my x-intercept 
will not be able to solve or like I can't solve for it. If I can't solve for it, it means I have no x-axis intercepts and that's my goal, right? So let's test that. This is my equation. I'm just going to write over here in this box here and I write f of x equals to it's x squared. It's minus four. Whoops, 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 whoops. Oh, f of x equals to x squared minus four times m times x. Okay. And it was plus 20 plus 20 right so watch we got I'm just gonna move that over there I'm gonna make this larger so you can see so see what we don't know is what M should be okay I'm just gonna make it large actually and then bold it bold okay See, the number here, we said we don't know what m should be. Right now, it's 4 times 1. So you see that m right here, m, that m value right there, we're guessing that it's 1. So negative 4 times 1 times x plus 20. Now at 1, you can already see that my graph does not have any x-axis in this. Can you see how it's above the x-axis right now? And it makes sense. Why? Because didn't I tell you just now, we just solved, we said, if m is anywhere between negative root 5 and root 5. For those who don't know what root 5 is, we, we can quickly calculate it. So let's go, if I did root of 5, so root of 5. Oh, whoops. Let me uh, do it again. 5 and square root of that, you get 2.23. So really, it's between negative 2.23. You choose any numbers between negative 2.23 for m and all the way to 2.23, it should be above the x-axis, meaning you get no x-axis intercepts, according to this graph. According to this graph here, you choose any numbers between negative 2.23 to 2.23, it should be above the x-axis, and 1 is within that range, yeah? So, let's have a look. Let's go back to my graph, let's test that. So I've got 1, I want to make, uh, I'm going to just change this to negative 10, so we can vary the values here, uh, 0. Two, five, uh, two. Okay. Watch. I'm going to choose M. I'm going to play around with M. So watch. I'm going to go to 1.2, still above the x-axis. Still above the x-axis. 1.6. This is, oh, oh wait, wait. 2.2. Wait, see, 2. I'm still above the x-axis. No x-axis intercepts. 2.2. Wait, wait, wait. 2.2. So close, but still above the x-axis. But remember, I told you, we worked out that if it's 2.23, anything greater than that, it should have an x-axis intercept. And you can see, when I, as soon as I move up to 2.4, 2.4, it has two axis intercepts. 2.6 onwards always has two axis intercepts. You can see that. And if, let, let's test it if I went the other way. See, negative 1, still no axis intercepts. Negative 1.4, no axis intercepts. Negative 2.2, almost close there. Still no, no x-axis intercepts, but as soon as I pass negative 2.3, bam. Pass negative 2.23, I get two axis intercepts. And I didn't have to guess that. I was able to calculate that mathematically by looking at this graph. That's the skill that you want to be able to take. Okay, so I can see when will I have one x-axis intercept you can see the only way to get one axis intercept, this is when, if I choose m equals to root 5, the discriminant is equal to 0, based on this coordinate right there. That, these two coordinates, they tell me what m should be, and they tell you what discriminant is. So if I actually try to, if I want to only have one intercept on the graph, right, if I want the graph to have an x intercept, only just one, then I just got to make sure m is root 5. So you watch. If I changed m to... I don't even know how to type root 5 here. Um, maybe if I change that, watch. I'm going to change this to times square root of 5. Okay, you watch. What's going to happen is I should only have one axis intercept. Watch this. Oh, wait. What happened? I can't apply it. There you go. See? You only get one x-axis intercept. I didn't have to guess it. As soon as I changed m to root 5, look at that. I get one x-axis intercept, even if I change that too, because remember we said it can be negative root 5 or positive root 5, if I said times negative root 5, watch this, even with negative root 5, I still get, see, with negative root 5, I still get one x-axis intercept, 
I didn't guess that. It wasn't trial and error. I can do it by looking at this equation here. Second part is, what if I want two axis intercepts, yeah? If you want two axis intercepts, we need the discriminant to be greater than zero. See, if the discriminant is greater than zero, which region is that? So I'm just gonna rub off all these highlights so you don't get confused. Actually, you know what, I'll do it again. Remember, we drew our graph, we had this graph, yeah? We got this and we said that was negative 80 and then we worked out this was root five and this was negative root five, right? Remember, this is your discriminant. Y is your discriminant. And this is your M. Alright, some random call. Sorry. Okay, so what we want, and I'm going to show you here, we want discriminant to be bigger than zero. This is your discriminant axis. This is where it's positive. So where on the graph is it positive, right? The only time it's positive on the graph is here. This is when it's greater than zero. This is when discriminant is positive. It's bigger than zero. That's exercise uh, one, three G's. Remember three G, this is greater than. So if you chose any numbers where M is bigger than root five, you can see that you get a coordinate. See, if I choose any X values on this right hand side, I will always get a coordinate above the X axis. And that represents a discriminant that is positive. A discriminant that is positive. See what I mean? And at the same time, on this side, if I chose any X values that, or M value, sorry, that is less than negative root five. So on this left-hand side, if I just keep choosing any numbers on this side, you can see that the coordinates on the graph will correspond to a positive discriminant. And that, that means if you've got a positive discriminant, you're always gonna get two axis intercepts. Yeah, that's, that's the key. So just to prove my point, anything bigger than root five or anything bigger than 2.23, I should get uh, above the x-axis. I mean, uh, anything, <laughs> above root 5 or negative root 5, I should get two axis intercepts. So have a look. I'm going to call this M again. Okay, so it's back to M. Watch. As soon as I pass that two axis intercept, two axis intercepts, they're all bigger than negative root 5. Or if I pass 2.23, so watch this. I pass it, two axis intercepts, two axis intercepts. They all give you that. So there's no guessing in this at all. I can manipulate the equation and figure out what M should be so that I can get two, one, or none. That's my goal. And that's the skill that you need to be able to develop, yeah? So I just spent a bit of time there, but I answered all of the questions there for one solution, for two distinct solutions. So in this, once you draw the graph, it's really easy. You can look at the graph and say, well, the only way for you to get two solutions, okay, so two solutions, if you want two x-axis intercepts, you knew m needed to be bigger than root five, yeah, so this region, anything bigger in this region, and m needed to be less than negative root 5, that will guarantee that the discriminant is positive. Discriminant is positive. If I wanted um, the first step, which is I wanted no solutions, right? No solutions means that the discriminant has to be negative. Negative. Now, the only re region where it's negative is in this region. See, this is the only time in the graph where it corresponds, it's all about corresponding to the y-axis, it's corresponding to a negative, see this value here is a negative discriminant, this coordinate right there corresponds to a negative discriminant, negative discriminants will give you no solutions or no x-axis intercepts, so what you can see is that region is actually in between negative root 5 to root 5, that's why my answer for the first part is m needs to be bigger than negative root 5 and m needs to be less than root 5. Now notice my notations, yes it has to be uh, written in this particular order because we conventionally always say that negative root 5 is smaller. We always write the smaller numbers on the left and bigger numbers on the right. I know you can do it this way, you can do it, do it like this and it still kind of makes sense as well but that's just not how we normally write it because we always say the smaller numbers on the left hand side and the larger numbers on the right hand side and negative root 5 is smaller. So this is not the way to do it this is the correct way, yeah? And then finally, to answer the question where they say if you only want a unique solution, which means you only want one x intercept, that is when you have discriminant equals zero. That's the only way for you to get one intercept, and that on the graph, it represents these points. I'm gonna highlight that. This is the only point, and this is the only point where the discriminant is the y values, yeah? This is the only point where y 
equals zero because it's y equals zero is on this line here. So anywhere on that line where the graph has a coordinate on that line, that's where it is. That's why it's equal to root five and negative root five. That's the only point. When m is negative root five, you're on the x-axis. When m equals to root five, you're on the m-axis as well. Okay. So you have to do that. Drawing the graph is the hardest part. Drawing this and understanding what it means. This is exercise 3F and 3G put together. Okay, that's why I emphasized a lot. In order to do 3F, you needed 3A to 3E to understand how to sketch a graph. X-intercept, Y-intercept, turning point, that, that kind of gist. And then 3G is understanding inequalities. 3H is quadratic formula. And then 3i is, you know, analyzing the quadratic formula. See, they all go in sequence. So you got to keep up with the homework and sort of pick up on what you're actually doing. Then it all makes sense. Yeah, but if you fall behind, then all of this will totally not make sense at all. Yeah? All right. I just did 5a, and I know I probably talked on a lot. But now I'm going to whip through b, c, and d so that you kind of feel it makes more sense to you. Yeah? I'm going to go now. I'm going to pull this one down. So I just did 5a, i. Um, and a triple i yeah let's now do b where it's more constructive so here we go i'm going to do b this is my equation imagine i've got y equals to m times x squared minus 3 times m times x plus 3. i want to type that in geogebra okay so i'm going to go back here i'm going to rearrange the equation again i'm going to change that to it was m times x squared uh, minus 3 times m times x and plus 3 okay so this is what I have this is what I have right I want to know what m values I need to choose I don't want to trial an error okay I don't want to trial an error I just want to know what m should be so what should these numbers m's to be so that I can get no x-axis intercepts or one x-axis intercept or two axis intercepts right so going back to the same theory again we know that a equals to the number in front of x squared, which is m. We know that b, which is the number in front of x, multiplied to x, that is, so it's negative 3m. And we know that c is the constant, so c is 3. We know that to find out the number of x-intercepts, okay, number of x-intercepts is highly dependent on the discriminant. And the discriminant, again, comes from your quadratic formula. Just going back here, see, that is your discriminant. We use the triangle to represent that. So b squared minus 4ac will tell you how many x-intercepts you will get. So let's look. Discriminant, let's work out b squared minus 4ac first. b squared minus 4ac, what would that equal to? I would have b, which is negative 3m squared, minus 4 times a, which is m, times c, which is 3. That gives me now 9m squared. The discriminant is equal to 9m squared minus 12m. That's what I have, right? Now, before you try to solve anything, I just want you to sketch this graph, okay? That's, that's the skill, right? I'm going to draw it right here. We are to sketch this graph, and that's now using exercise 3F. We have to work out, we have to pretend this is your discriminant axis, this is your M. You've got to pretend this is your Y values, and this is your X values, yeah? You've got to pretend that. So, if I ask you to sketch 9M squared minus 12M, how do you do it? Now, same thing. You gotta find your y-intercept, x-intercept, turning points. Now clearly this is a general form, it's not a turning point form. So what I'm gonna to have to do first is I'm now gonna say, all right, I'm going to find the y-intercept, yeah? Y-intercept is when x equals zero. In our case, m is x, so I'm gonna let discriminant, when m is zero, you got nine times zero squared, so I'm gonna find the uh, discriminant intercept, or the y-intercept, think of it that way, okay? let m equal to zero. So I've got minus 12 times zero, and that clearly is zero minus zero, which is zero. So what does that mean? That means I've got a coordinate right there. Yeah, I've got a coordinate there. When m is zero, the discriminant is zero. Okay, that's, that's all I found out so far. So when m, this is m, and this is your discriminant, okay? Next one, I need to find x-intercepts. So x-intercept is when you let y equal to zero, but in our case, y is your discriminant. So if discriminant equals zero, you get 9m squared minus 12m. You, in order to solve this, is, is just back to exercise 3a to 3e. You gotta factorize and solve, and clearly common factors here is 3m, m minus, oh sorry, that's 3m, 
to 3m and minus 4. Okay? And if you use null factor law to solve, you can tell that 3m has to equal to 0 or 3m minus 4 has to equal to 0. Okay? And so that works out to be m has to be 4 over 3 or m equals to 0. That will tell you the m intercept. So it's when at 0, which we already have, the other spot is that when m is 4 and 3, the discriminant is 0. Right? And I know that this is a positive graph. It's it's a because you think about it, it's 9m squared, it's it's a positive 9, so I know it's a positive graph. So it has to look something like this. Now you don't have to find the turning point because we're not interested in that. Remember, we're just analyzing when it's above, less than, or equal to zero. We're analyzing the discriminant. So you don't have to bother working for the turning point unless you want to. Yeah? Now, answering the question, the first part of the question says no solutions. So once you've got the graph, it's really easy now. This is the hardest part. We've done all the hard hard work. For it to be less than zero, remember, discriminant has to be less than zero. This is the only time of the graph where the graph is less than zero. Because remember, this is your discriminant axis. This is where this whole y value is down here. All these coordinates have a negative discriminant. So we already know the only way to get this yellow region is if I chose m numbers or m values between 0 and 4 and 3. Okay, so if I just chose, you can see it's between this point to this point. If I chose any of those x values, I will get the y values down here. Okay, so to answer the question already, A, I mean I, I have to choose numbers for M. M needs to be between 0 and it needs to be 4 and 3. So it's less than 4 and 3 and it's greater than 0. Any numbers between that, it should be fine. So if you're confused with the fractions, 4 and 3 is just really 1 and a third or 1.33. Right? If I chose any numbers between 0 to 1.33, it should have no solutions, meaning the x-axis should be above, it should be above the x-axis. No x-intercepts at all. So let's test that. Okay, so we just said, now let's have a look at m. I'm going to change this to um, point, point 0.1. My point oh 0.01. No, I'll do point 0.1. Okay, so watch this. We said it has to be between it to have no solutions. Right now, our graph, if you just look at our graph, we have two x-intercepts in this graph here. When I chose m negative 10, when m is negative 10, it's not giving me no x-intercepts. Uh, even all the way here, see, I'm still getting x-intercepts, x-intercepts. But watch, when should I not have x-intercepts? We said it had to be, m needed to be between 0 and 1.33, or 4 and 3, right? Watch this. This is negative 1. As soon as I get to 0, watch, I will hit 0. Whoops, where's 0? As soon as I hit 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0. Okay, that has no x-intercepts at all. Watch, I hit negative 0.1. I still have it. But as soon as I hit 0, none. But as soon as I got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, look, none of the graph right now, none of it so far has any x-intercepts at all. 0.8 doesn't have it. 0.9. But what, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, if you actually zoom in, check it out. I still don't have an x-intercept. 1.3 is so close, isn't it? It's so close, but I don't have an x-intercept because we already said it had to be bigger than, it had to be between 0 uh, and 1.33. Anywhere in between that, you're not going to get. And 0.3 is smaller than 1.33. So that's why you still have no x-intercepts. If you want an x-intercept, it has to be bigger than 1.33. So you watch, if I go to 1.4, bam, I get two x-intercepts straight away. Yeah? So that's what I mean. You didn't have to guess. You can solve for all of this. So I just answered the question. You can choose between 0 to 4 on 3, and you should get no x-axis intercepts at all. Okay? That's the goal. Does that make a bit more sense? Yeah? So once you've got the graph, it's really easy answering the next few questions. If you want one solution, if you only want one solution, well, clearly, if you get four on three and you get zero, because that's when discriminant is zero. Didn't, that's what we said before. When discriminant is zero, when discriminant is zero, we could see that m had to be four on three or m is zero. That's the only time you're going to get one x-intercept. Yeah? 
But the problem is when m is zero, you don't have a quadratic equation. Watch, if I put back m t equal to zero, notice before it was just a straight line. And zero, so hard. There we go. See, it's a straight line. Why is that? Why does that happen? Well, if you think about it, if I sub m into the equation, you know, like, of course, you like if I put a zero there, zero, and I put a zero, of course, you only get a like the equation disappears. You only get three. So y equals three is just a horizontal line. That, that's why. Okay, so that's why m uh, equals to zero is a problem. Uh, whereas m equals to four and three, I should have one x-intercept. You watch. I'm going to change m now. I'm going to change m to 4 and 3. Watch. I'm going to change this to times 4 over 3. Yeah? And I'm going to change this m over here as well to 4 over 3. Watch. If I press OK, I should only have one x-axis intercept. Look at that. See, it wasn't by chance. I wasn't guessing. I'm not a prophet. I'm just using mathematics to figure out how do I get one x-axis intercept. And clearly that has it. Okay, and that, that's what I mean. Your goal is to answer the question. You can look at it all just from this graph here, and you can see if you want to have two intercepts, you gotta choose any values to make sure you get this section. Now that purple section, you can only get it if you chose numbers that are greater than four and three, because it's it's on this region here. Anywhere on the left and anywhere on the right will guarantee that you will have discriminants bigger than zero. See that? Bigger than zero, bigger than zero. All these coordinates here are bigger than zero. So to answer the third question, so this was m has to be equal to four on three, okay, to have one solution. Whereas the third one, to have two solutions, you just gotta make sure m is bigger than four and three, and m is less than zero. Yeah, so if I just go back and I change this to m again, um, watch, I'm just gonna change that to m, m times that, Minus four. What, what happened? Is it minus m x? I forgot the equation. Minus three m. Okay. Minus three m. Minus three times m times times x, and this was meant to be m. Times. All right, here we go. Watch. Anything less than that, two x intercepts, two x intercepts, two x intercepts. Less than zero will have you two x intercepts. As soon as I pass 1.33 or 4 and 3, I should also have two x axis intercepts. So you'll go 1.3, and then as soon as I hit 1.4, there we go, two axis intercepts, two axis intercepts. As though it wasn't a guess, I can just answer the question and just say greater than 4 and 3, m less than zero, and I get my answer. Okay, so I did 5a, 5b. Let's do now, same thing again. Hopefully you're starting to pick up the, the drill. Okay, I'm gonna move it over here. Same drill again. I'm gonna do C, and I'm gonna do D. Yeah, but I'm now, I'm gonna do less explanation, I'm just gonna do the questions, yeah? So C, you got 5x squared minus 5mx minus m. This is my equation. I want to make sure I get these, no solutions, one solution, two distinct solutions. Yeah, first thing I need, discriminant. Discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, minus 4ac, and b is negative 5m, so negative 5m squared minus four times a, which is five times c, which is negative m. And here we go, we got 25m squared plus 20m, because two negatives make a positive, right? Next step, I now need to sketch this graph. I need to know if this is my discriminant and this is my m values. I want to know what it looks like, right? Now, all you really need is your x-intercepts, really, because then you can draw the graph. This is clearly a positive graph. It's a positive graph, so I know it's a smiley shape because uh, the number in front of m squared is 25 and it's positive. So it's a smiley face. Now, if I were to factorize this, okay, this now gives me 5m, and that gives me 5m plus 4, right? And... Remember, the thing that you really need is you just want to know where the x-intercepts are, or in this case, where m-intercepts are. So if you were to solve this, you let discriminant equal to zero, let discriminant equal to zero, because that's when you get it on the x-axis, right? So discriminant equals zero, you get zero equals to 5m times 5m plus four. And we can use null factor law, that means either 5m equals to zero, or 
5m plus 4 equals 0. This is exercise 3c. m has to equal to negative 4 and 5. And here m is equal to 0. True? So what does that mean? It just means you've got two x-axis intercepts here. You've got at 0. When m is 0, the discriminant is 0. When m is negative 4 and 5, discriminant is also 0. And it's a positive graph, so it looks like this. Okay, so now I've got the graph, and it's so easy to answer the question because if I want to answer the first part, no solutions, where is it no solutions? Very simple. It's clearly between negative 4 and 5 and 0. So answering the question, whoops, answering the question now, I can simply say m. So I, m needs to be between 0 and negative 4 and 5, and I should have no excess intercepts. Yeah? For one solution, I need the discriminant to equal to 0, and we know that discriminant because we just solved it just now. When discriminant equals 0, m was equal to 0 and negative 4 and 5. And it makes sense. These are the two points on the graph right there and right there. Those are the only two points when discriminant is 0. So that's why m is equal to negative 4 and 5, and m equals to 0. Okay? Um, and that should give you uh, one exit it's in set yeah and lastly to answer the last question I said you want to have two distinct solutions and clearly where will it have two distinct solutions it's this this is when discriminant is greater than zero see it corresponds to a positive discriminant and the only way to get those values there or those coordinates is if you chose any numbers greater than zero because that gives you that coordinate this gives you that coordinate they're all positive so it has to be less than negative four and five and bigger than zero so the answer is when m is continuing less than negative four and five and m is continuing larger than zero it should have two axis intercepts okay so this is no x intercepts this is one x intercept this is for two x intercepts okay and again just to finish it off like to prove that i'm right Let's do again, final one. I'm just going to take this away five times. x squared, what is that? Minus five times m times x. Okay, minus m. Okay, here we go. Let's test what I just said. I said if it's less than negative four and five, which is negative 0.8, um, so between zero and, oh, actually, I just realized I did this wrong. It should be this way because negative 4 and 5 is smaller. So negative 4 and 5 to 0. So my bad. Okay, so between negative 4 and 5 to 0, I should have no x intercepts. So let's have a look. Watch this. I'm going to go m between negative 4 and 5 and 0. So 0, watch. I'm going to go to 0. Here's 0. As soon as I. Oh, wait, wait, where's 0? Here. Oh, no. Right. I can't get it. There we go. 0, I get. 1 x intercept because remember that's what we said as well we said when m equals 0 and m is negative 4 and 5 you should get 1 x intercept so I got that see when m is 0 I get 1 x intercept now watch less than 0 I should have no no x intercepts less than 0 no x intercepts no x intercepts and as soon as I hit negative 0.8 which is negative 4 and 5 I should have 1 x intercept watch negative 0.8 bam 1 x intercept see that so zoom in you can see that by having m is negative 0.8, I do get that. And then what did we say? We said that if m is less than negative 0.8 and m is greater than 0, I should have two x-intercepts. Watch. I move this, and I get two x-intercepts. If I pass 0, I get two x-intercepts. Yeah? So it's no guesses. No guesses at all to answer these questions here. I've just done 5a, b, and c. I'm hoping you, you're sort of picking up the gist here. I want to leave d for you to do because uh, I need to make a quick call and um, I'll post this video up. I mean, it's pretty long already. I think it's been like almost an hour. Hopefully this is a good start, but I will make more videos to answer more of the questions from 3i. But you have to watch these videos and you have to have your skills from prior. Yeah, all the exercise prior to this. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope this helps a lot. Um, good luck studying. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to end the video here and I will do more, I will do more.